OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT and GPT-4, have released a research study looking at how large language models may affect the job market. Their research shows that around 80% of US workers might have at least 10% of their tasks influenced by these models. They found that using a language model could help workers finish about 15% of all tasks in the US much faster without sacrificing any quality. When you add software on top of these models, this number can increase to between 47 and 56% of all tasks. They also stated that jobs that require skills like programming and writing might be more affected by AI, while jobs focused on science and critical thinking might be less affected. Now, before we go any further, I just want to remind everyone that any predictions of AI and the future should be taken as guidelines as opposed to hard and fast rules. The goalposts are always moving and tech changes notoriously quickly, especially when we're talking about artificial intelligence. So with that in mind, let's explore some of these ideas and see if we we can answer the question, what will we do when AI takes all of our jobs? As we get into this topic, it's important that we consider the speed of transition. The urgency in the voices from AI experts that we're currently hearing stem from concerns about how quickly AI is progressing. Progress is fantastic, but too much of it too quickly is hard to adapt to, especially when we're talking about a technology that we don't fully understand yet. In a TED talk, neuroscientist Sam Harris raises a thought-provoking question about AI and the future economy. Ask yourself, what would happen under our current economic and political order. It seems likely that we would witness a level of wealth inequality and unemployment that we have never seen before. As Sam alludes to, if we lack a proper plan and safety net, job losses, income inequality, and social upheaval may become inevitable. It's this potential for chaos that has everyone so worried. And rightfully so. So what might happen if AI replaced all jobs today? Well, we'd probably witness unparalleled chaos, riots, and the collapse of the global and economic order. However, if the speed of transition is a little slower, there are some more optimistic perspectives. The McKinsey Global Institute estimates that AI will generate approximately $13 trillion in economic value by 2030. Stuart Russell, a professor of computer science at the University of California, Berkeley, and the author of The AI Textbook, also agrees that if we do AI correctly, it will bring us big gains. And the net present value, that's the cash equivalent of that inco increased income stream, would be about 13.5 quadrillion, that's 13.5 thousand trillion dollars. So that's a lower bound on the value of creating general purpose AI technology. Even Elon Musk, someone who is extremely vocal about the dangers of AI, seems to believe that if done correctly, AI could bring us a world of abundance. I wouldn't worry about the, the sort of putting people out of a job thing. Um, I think the, the, this really will be a world of abundance. Any goods and services uh, will be available to anyone who wants them. That it'll be so cheap to have goods and services, it'll be ridiculous. If we can successfully navigate the disruption phase, the part where we'll experience job losses and skill mismatches, there could be a very bright future waiting for us. So let's assume that we safely create competent AI and we make it through the disruption phase. What then? In the animated film Wall-E, humanity is portrayed as becoming mindless, atrophied, and overly dependent on AI. Humans are effectively disconnected from reality and their own history. Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, although not explicitly about AI, presents a society where hedonism and overstimulation are the name of the game. If we look at both stories, we may think that AI-driven abundance could lead us to a life devoid of purpose, value, and emotion. And you know what? It might. But there are other perspectives. Some argue that AI taking over work could provide humans with the opportunity to focus on personal growth, fulfillment, and social connections. To get a better understanding of why this may be the case, it's important to look at the science of human motivation and how it relates to work. The renowned psychologist Abraham Maslow came up with the famous hierarchy of needs theory. It outlines a range of human needs, from basic physiological needs, such as food and water, to high-level psychological ones, like self-esteem and self-actualization. When humans satisfy enough elements in one 
one part of the pyramid, they're granted the freedom to move up into a higher category. Obviously, life is a lot messier than this, and people are constantly moving up and down the rungs on the pyramid, sometimes simultaneously. The point to note, though, is that for the most part, many people only work in order to satisfy their physiological and safety needs. Now, building on Maslow's theories, psychologists Edward Desi and Richard Ryan developed the self-determination theory. This theory states that humans are motivated by three innate psychological needs, competence, autonomy, and relatedness. Financial instability often prevents people from satisfying these needs. This is because it constrains the time and resources available for personal growth, goal setting, and social connections. Now, this may not be the case for everyone. Of course, some people love their job and what it encompasses. There may also be some people that just tend to have the perfect work-life balance. There's no doubt though that for a lot of people, Work is just something that they have to do to put food on the table. Any hope to work on other aspects of their life are restricted because work takes up so much of their mental and physical attention. In a world where AI provides all the goods and services, humans could have both the time and resources to forever satisfy their physiological and safety needs. And they could also have the freedom to explore competence, autonomy, and human connection. Essentially, the line of thinking is that with our basic needs perpetually satisfied, humans can can and will be motivated to focus on the most fulfilling aspects of life. Meaning we can spend more time building stronger relationships, pursuing hobbies, traveling, making art, and doing whatever else it is that our hearts desire. Some people aren't convinced by these motivation theories. For many, they argue, work gives a sense of purpose. A reason to get out of bed in the morning even if it's not a dream job. Some are concerned that losing work may lead to a nihilistic attitude where people are just kind of wandering around aimlessly waiting to die. They use the COVID lockdown situation as an example of how not going to work caused people to suffer mentally, even when they had their families around them and lots of free time to pursue hobbies, even if it was only online. There's also a concern for the loss of dignity that many associate with unemployment. Generally speaking, a lot of people that are unemployed feel shame or a sense of inadequacy. People just don't like feeling like they're useless. Of course, there are counterpoints to these two concerns. Firstly, the situation during the pandemic was far from ideal. Although some people had more family time, they were also facing significant restrictions, and this prevented them from enjoying high quality experiences with their loved ones. Additionally, there were still concerns about loss of income and potential health risks, and all of this contributed to an atmosphere of anxiety. A jobless future with AI envisions a world where people have complete freedom to explore the planet and to be free of financial concerns or constraints on their movement. This creates a vastly different environment from what was experienced during the COVID-19 lockdowns. As for unemployment and the loss of dignity, it's important to recognize that this often stems from social pressure. Unemployed people generally only feel inadequate because they feel as if everyone else is working. In a future where AI has replaced most jobs and people share a similar lifestyle, this social pressure might be significantly reduced. Societal norms could shift and fostering deep human connections and pursuing personal development could become the new norms. You might actually come to feel more dignified by refusing to work and instead spending more time in the community with others. One final concern that many people share is that humans might still lack the desire to do anything more fulfilling with their life, even if they do have the time, freedom, and abundance to do so. The thought goes like this. If AI can do everything a million times better than us, including our hobbies, there'd be no point in doing anything at all. Why would we play sport, make art, or learn something new? Here are some points to challenge that line of thinking. Firstly, professionals already exist in multiple fields, yet people still enjoy these activities at an amateur level. I mean, there are footballers that many of us will never come close to in our lifetimes. And there are musicians that we will never be able to play as good as. But this doesn't stop us from joining a local team and having a kick, or picking up a guitar and jamming out with our friends. Secondly, although AI may outperform humans in games like chess, we found that we still prefer to watch 
and versus other humans. In fact, with regard to chess, it's quite possible that it's more popular today than it ever has been, despite AI dominance. Lastly, AI can actually enhance human skills. When AlphaGo defeated Lee Sedol, the best Go player of our time, in four out of five games, many thought that people were going to stop playing the game. Contrary to this belief, many players actually analyzed AlphaGo's strategies and used this knowledge to elevate their own skills. Thousands of Go players experience significant improvements by learning from the groundbreaking techniques that AI brought to the game. Rather than diminishing our interests in hobbies and pursuits, AI could serve as a powerful tool for growth and inspiration. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's difficult to reasonably predict what the future will look like when things can change so quickly. What we know for sure though, is that the way the economy currently runs is deeply ingrained in our thinking. And this sometimes makes it difficult to envision a world without work that we'd actually wanna live in. As we progress to a world where AI takes on a more significant role, it's important to understand that the economy and social norms will most likely change quite a bit. Things like a universal basic income, which are kind of mocked right now, might become the norm. So as this all unfolds, we need to ask ourselves, why do we work in the first place? For those who love their jobs, what aspects of them do you find most fulfilling? What new infrastructure needs to be introduced to make a workless future work? These questions only lead to hundreds more, but I think they're a good place to start. By understanding our motivations for work, we can find out how these needs can be met in a workless future. And by identifying what you like most about work, you can shape the priorities and goals of a future without traditional jobs. As always, I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.